pass. There is a nice... Uh, you, you can jump on one of those cylindrical thingy majiggies, those sewer things where Snappy is standing for a nice Cogs. angle. Cog, it's not a cog. Anyway, a nice, a nice angle towards a short position. Don't see it too often these days, but it, is, it does exist. And it's a good one to know. Have a look at that hair. That hair is on fleek. I don't know what that means, but people say fleek, so there we go. Good job, good job. Yep, Hobbit charging into the A bomb site with the Glock. He's got all those bullets trying to land that headshot. As we can see, there is one player in the bank. Let's get the x ray up. See who play. Exile by Optimus, but there are too many men on road for Ents who are looking for an early upset versus the likes of Gambit now. Four versus two as Nafani wonders uh, what to do. Where's the bomb? <laughs> That's a good question. Maybe there is no bomb. Yeah. It wouldn't be the first round that's existed with no bomb. Yeah, that's I was going to say. So. It's got to be under a CT on the minimap or something. Is any explanation? Maybe there's no bomb. There it is. Okay. There it is. There we <laughs> go. Well, Shiro is going to be seeing if he can find the opening here. Nope. Baited. Dota will take him down. So, not too much to be done here. Napoli with that PD50 will get eliminated too. Good shots coming in from Dota as well. Getting the fist pump. Feel connected to your teammate. Need that uh, that connection. The only Glocks here for Gambit, so indeed it's a full save for them. Objectives, you know, drain out the utility of your opponents, which you can do by playing pretty slow. But as we can see, you know, we have Ents that's opted for M4 Farmers. You know, they don't have a huge amount of util going into this round, anyways. It's a nice pop of color on that Farmers. Yeah, it's really nice. He's patiently just having a look-see. I don't think he realizes, not sure if he realizes that he's seen three different players, but he's seen at least two. Pretty relaxed, pretty calm is Hades. Snappy keeping an eye on things. Ents yeah. pretty comfortable for now. They are up against Glock at this point. I think Hobbit had a Desert Eagle, but everyone else had the Glocks. Yeah. You just don't, don't want to give a single kill to your opponents here. You would expect that Spinks will just chill for the rest of the round. Let his teammates fill in and... What's happening here? has a lot of trigger discipline. I've noticed in, in all the engagements, the opportunities he had. Just looking for information. So we'll see if that has a uh, story to uh, to tell as this map continues. So, on the third round, we'll see the AK-47 for Gambit. Hobbit will be shy of grenades due to the Desert Eagle, but the rest will have a lot of flashbang smokes. Just a one Molotov in the hands of Exile. So I do wonder if we're going to see a faster round from Gambit now on this first buy round of the half. Yeah, full util, basically, more or less. Only Hobbit to not have everything. And Ents are... 55. They're, yeah, they, they get the H unit onto Shiro, but otherwise, other than that, they're playing somewhat passively here for control. Both Hobbit and Axile looking after Monster as well for now. And of course, we've got the bomb there as well on Inters, so the expectation is to finish on that B site, but they have presence towards A as well. Good opening pick from Hobbit, though, found deep on a Monster Defender. That is a huge win, and that's going to force Snappy to actually make a play in Connector. They've got to get something back in their courts. And it looks like, oh, how wow, is he alive? Snappy somehow able to actually back out of that one. Unbelievable. I have to assume Shiro is looking at the radar or something because uh, it's inexcusable otherwise not to get a kill there. Crazy. That, this... that is a, a huge opportunity for Gambit to make it 5v3 and really shut down the round. And one plus is just that they didn't get a huge amount of information as far as Ents are concerned. It could still be a B play. It could still be, you know, a monster play just as well as an A play. They, they don't really have vision on most of the map. So that's, that's the one plus. And oh, okay, we'll see Hobbit finding a way to finish off Snappy. Yeah, and Ents at this point may want to stack a bomb site. Though here flashes towards A, but three versus five with Diha pretty low. I would imagine they'll just try to save at this point, just quietly moving away. Note how they are shift walking. They're not running away because that would tell Gambit that they're running away and maybe they'd be hunted. They won't give that information, but just slowly slink away with the shift key held down so as not to concede their position. 
An early advantage there for Gambit. Of course, it wasn't a full buy from Entz. The weapons they took from the early rounds are present here. So we may see uh, a better look of Entz later on. No AWP is yet for either side, of course. But it's nice to have some early, su early success on the board as far as Gambit are concerned. The first buy round is theirs. There are still four players on the server looking for their first kill, three of which are on the Gambit side. Interns, Shiro and Nafani. No kills just yet. And d -Hart. still early, of course. But we'll keep an eye on these things. So, starting off pretty well for Ents overall. Full buy on this next round. And the AWP is coming in to hand here for Ents. So that's going to be interesting to see how they try to activate that one. We can see that it is, of course, in the hands, as you would expect, of Hades. Been pretty wonderful this tournament so far. Looking for the quick peek, the elevated peak towards T ramp. And it's not going to see all that much just yet. And oh no, Doto getting a freebie through the smoke there on Monster Tunnel. I was about to say the that is where the emphasis is here for Gambit in this round, around this monster position. And with Suez Control as well, look how active Ents are. This is great to see from them. And Gambit have nothing on the map right now except Connector. Yeah, going back to the challenger stage. I think this is a, a good proactive example for Mobby Star Riders, for example, who are a bit too passive in their overpass and taking control of the map and really limiting what Gambit can do. They find themselves in a four versus three now, Ents. Still with control of the short B position. So, so sees a flashbang coming, but still eats a little too much of it. That will give Gambit some map control now, although Snappy will try to creep forward with no warning, no flashes, no nothing, and that's an important kill for him. And he knows that one of the remaining two players at least is outside Monster as he sees that Molotov land at the barrels. So that's a lot of information for Ents, which will make Gambit even more scared. Yeah, I really like how Snappy was playing that, just trying to use the sound cues, understanding that they just killed his teammates. So they've got to clear positions. Maybe he can catch somebody mid-clear. And that's exactly what, they, what happened. And now I'm just you know, resting on the B side, the two players. They have Sphinx, who's pretty close to A, so they're just setting up for retake on A. Oh, unfortunately, that's the bomb down as well, which will certainly be a huge sigh of relief there for Ents. They know everything now. And Shiro is so far away from the action, unable to really have any impact here now. I wonder what the plan was, considering the time and where Shiro is, Yes. with the molly on short by the bomb carrier. That's... Yeah, I, d I don't know how they connect up to, to kind of play off of each other. I'm kind of trying to work it out too. Not really sure. Yeah, but like is he throwing a molly and running up connector maybe or something? I don't know. Well, 3 1 for Ents. Gambit are in a position to buy once again. Inters could drop an AWP in the helmetless. We'll see three players haven't bought just yet for Gambit. Hobbits picks up an AK. Still waiting for Inters to make his play. Yeah, so far, so far, so good friends. It's nice to see early proactiveness. No AWP for Gambit after all, as you can see. Um, but uh, yeah, the proactiveness from from Ents with map control and so on is is good. We're, we're in for a competitive game of overpass. I think people are expecting quite a lot from Gambit at this major, and you do wonder if the pressure may play a part in things. But we'll have to see. Very very early stages here for this game, though, not this major. Full buy again. And again, you know, Gavit's trying to stick towards the B side of the map early on, but they don't, they're not really looking early for early sewers control. But I'll hold that thought. We might have an engagement here for Nafani, you know, be sort of defaulting, you know, slowly poking and prodding around long as well as Party and Spinks being so ready by the boulder could cause some problems. Might be a timing for him. Gavit walking through Monster now. Onto the B site. And, I mean, there are players here. Doto in the water is going to win that battle. And there's more players to go. He's got to try to delay this one. Oh, great job so far. Doto! He's been traded out, but it's a 2v3 here. It's doable for Enz. Yeah, bomb falling back a little towards Monster just in case. You can see Sphinx is on a very, very long rotation. And Gambit may slow things down now, which may not be in their favor. As they don't know what the climate is with the remainder of the players. You can see Hades is posted up so to speak. But generally, you'd want to stay on the uh, the left side of that pillar from the T perspective. 
with an AWP in an ideal situation holding the right hand side. You may see the likes of that from Simple later on. Well, bomb planted. They still don't know where either player is. Fink's coming through from the back and Shiro can focus on that. They are set up now. Ents. Nafani's got short, so Shiro can focus. Although he's looking towards CT as well. Spinks making his way through. Now he's eating the flashbang. The multi frag is here. And now Nafani finds himself in some trouble. Playing the off angles. Avoiding the flashbang. Oh, what is he up to now? They know exactly where he is. Trying to avoid. That bomb is pretty far ticked. And there's actually no cover. There's no meat shield. No nothing. Nafani just trying to waste time as best he can. Gets the final kill as well. See if he can grab an AWP. No, just the AK. And he's going to die anyway. But that is a round for Gambit. Yeah, really surprising. You know, uh, Ents had a smoke, a flashbang. They had they had utility to shut down, shut down that short position, but opted to just uh, just try to go for the stick. See, the slightest frustration there with Ents. Yeah, that, that, <laughs> I think they definitely felt like they should have won that one for sure. That two v one. Yeah, what's going on with the with the the lack of cover on the bomb diffuser? Yeah, it looks very disconnected, didn't it? They they, don't, they weren't really sort of playing together there, and the person going for the defuse was the one with all the util as well. Yeah, the smoke, the flash. There it is, noise cancelling headphones again. I have those in my bag. That's good. These I don't know what these are. These are the the four esports. No, the in ears. The in ears. Stay. Oh right, okay. All right. Well, here's the replay. Just yeah, just no, no coordination there. It seems. Yeah. Uh, it like, seemed like why? Why am I not got? Have I got no cover? Why is there no cover for the bomb diffuser? It's a very yeah. good question. And uh, but again, if you're gonna mess something up, do it early. Do it in round five, not round twenty-five. Well, there's still time to do it in round twenty-five as well. <laughs> <laughs> Certainly is. A lot of flashbangs for Ents. They've got some M4s as well, and they will be aggressing, trying to make something happen. They had a lot of rifles, though, but I've, maybe they felt like that wasn't enough trying to make the flashbangs work out. Spinks has an opportunity, although it dwindles a little as Snappy gets deleted and Spinks is soon to go as well, which leaves Hades in a one versus three. The money's together, the bomb's not planted. Seems he was considering it. Maybe he still is. He doesn't have a kit. I'm not sure if there's one around the site. Got to be careful about running in this position because um, beyond this wall on the left, a player and connector would hear him run. So it seems he will be saving. He's not give. He's not. He's basically looking for the opponent gambit to give him an opportunity to try and clutch it, but they're not going to do that. So he'll be hiding in plain sight. Yep, this round. Oh, he's doing it with no hands, Dan. I know. Yeah, so I've been watching it the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He's an octopus. <laughs> so many limbs. <laughs> so it's going to be the third round for Gambit. So coming back into this one, it did feel like Ents were in such a good spot and looked really cozy, just very comfy in the with the AWP and the, and the positions that they had. But yeah, it's, it's suddenly, it's all changed. It's all changing quite quickly for them here. And suddenly Gambit signs look a lot better. And e even though Gambit aren't really taking ground early on, I feel like against are winning the early map control battle, given the fact that Gambit aren't pressuring sewers really. They're not really trying to explore the connector quickly. And, and they're also not going towards bathrooms or long wall that quickly, generally speaking, on these defaults. That said, it's eco territory just with the saved M4. That's all that there is to play with in this round. And we'll have a long push with the M4. Oh, it's been deflected expertly. Yeah, Snappy was in tow with a flashbang. I would have liked to have seen, I mean, we saw A play with it and Snappy's picked up that M4 and tries to fall back and hold on to it. I love that skin that Icarus felt. Snappy, can he find a third one? Oh, he's almost winning the round alone on long. Has he seen the bomb though? No, he hasn't. It's down by connector at present. and. Shiro needs to stay alive to rotate that bomb. Spinks can collect the M4 in the meantime. DR and Doto getting their boost game on towards short. We'll see if it's going to be a swing from Exile. Gets his bell rung, but with a USP, won't be too concerned with that. In fact, he's got 97 HP. He dinked Hobbit. He had enough time to dink Hobbit just before dying there. <laughs> so it is still quite doable if oh, Doto Hobbit, can survive me. here. Doto, oh, he's found, oh, he found just a small moment there. Looking for all the damage and they're all one headshot away from death now, so Sphinx can do this. But time is really against Sphinx, given that there is no kit in hand. And they know precisely where he's coming from. It's going to be easy. 
Oh, he's found, oh. So oh, he's found the damage, though. Given how low Shura and Axile are, it is still a possibility, but it has to be quick. Again, almost no time for, def for a defuse here. Would need the full 10 seconds. So it looks like it's not going to be happening here for Spinks, but at least damage is on the board. Remove some of those guns. The money's not good here at all for Gambit. So this puts Ents in a position where if they win the next round, they can take economic control. The question is, you know, do we want to see any alterations from Ents' openings? And I'm hard pressed to say yes there, because I feel like what they've been doing early on has been giving them advantages. They, they take a lot of grounds early on. Exile could have dropped an AWP in this round, but he bought a few grenades, which leaves him short now. I don't know if they didn't notice or if they're just chilling and don't need an AWP right now. Maybe they'll look to take one away from the uh, CTs when an opportunity arises. We'll need to wait for one of the Ents players to reconnect to the server before we continue. It's a wonderful sign for Ents. But as we go back into the round, we can take stop, stock of the buy here. And you were mentioning we don't have, haven't really seen a proper full buys yet. We have a MAC-10 in play here by Axile. No AWPs present at all. I think this is a very deliberate MAC-10. He had the yeah. best spawn into the B bomb site. And it's going to be a fast one. He had money for five AKs, but that MAC-10 can run and gun. And he can create space for his team, but Dihar's going to take that space away. Running out of bullets eventually. That HE is going to do some good damage, which means they are one possible now with these silenced M4s. And Snappy will be looking for that. Finds an angle on Shiro. And he really holds things down here. The fast play has not worked out for Gambit. And again, we spoke about the economy already. Inters with the AK-47 left in a one versus three. He has time on his side. Yeah, unfortunate round for Gambit. I think the fast timing through Monster makes a lot of sense, given that Ents have, have been reasonably passive, but they have been more active around the sewers position. So had it been the case that they would push sewers early timing then gambit get through monster get onto the site and they've isolated the defense quite effectively but their gamble did not work out in that instance but as you say inters 1v3 has the bomb in hand he's found his way up the a long position and might be able to get a plant here especially if he gets a good timing onto hades <coughs> who is playing front bathrooms right now or back bathrooms i should say is there a spot here no not visible toward divider Inters must surely hear the stepping. Oh, good headshot, but there's the trade from Hades from Bathrooms, and that is so important. And that's going to be 4-4, Ents tying things up. And unfortunately, again, we mentioned it, the economy was not really all that stable for Gambit, so they will be saving in this round. And Ents should be back to winning ways. Yeah, that was a really important multi-frag on the B-bomb site. Early Molly on T ramp. And let's see what Gambit have. Gone for the force buy here with the Galils and the AKs. They're playing the same kind of setup uh, as, as they are in a lot of their defaults, actually, where they have a three outside monster and then two kind of working towards the A side of the map early on. And perhaps this is to kind of play counter to your teams who like to push monster because you know typically some teams will have one lurk looking after monster so you can make a two-man push with a flashbang and to catch that player but it's not happening and these are the most deep players here for gambit and sphinx is gonna get flashed back over nice entry coming through there though at the same time on the other side of the map towards monster tunnel so that's the b site entered now and the bomb to go down it's a tight game of over parts so far. No one's really found comfort with money and so on. Maybe he doesn't know if anybody's down there now. Due to that Molly being extinguished. Four versus three. Do you push in and lose everything here? Well, that's really got to cut things off and it's going to quickly escalate for Ents. That's a very rough position. Yeah. A very, very rough position for them. Difficult decision to make when you're so close to the bomb site as well, but indeed it will be very costly. And Gambit will scurry away and take the lead. And again, it's a difficult situation for Ent. We saw them with some chances with a solo rifle, but uh, we cannot really expect much. It's it's actually really interesting what Gambit are doing like strategically right now because they're playing 
really passive, as we mentioned. They'll leave two players to sort of clear the A side of the map, and then there's three just hanging out by Monster. So those three players are able to find timings towards that B site where maybe they've in the mid round, the rotation for the CTs kind of drifts away and maybe they can isolate one player or maybe the CTs are trying to make an info play and you've got three players there to punish. So it gives you a lot of options in that mid round. So that, that kind of petrifies, I, I believe, the CT defense somewhat because you're, you're not sure when Gambit are going to make a move like that. So if it is the case that that conditions ends to play more passively on the B site and to play more passively in general, they're going to be able to start ramping up the pace and they'll get more for free on the A side of the map, I would imagine, as we start to see them defaulting and making alterations. Maybe they won't make alterations, James. Maybe that's the mind games. Where's the grip tape at? I wonder how many players have grip tape on their mice at this LAN. Probably very, very few. Yeah, surprising because grip tape is very good. Yeah, as, especially for the finishes on uh, many mice. But I just, I, I think there's a, a lack of awareness. Some people have the clammy hand problem as well, so it can certainly help with that. But I just find it easier, especially if you're you have a high sense and you, or a small mouse and you throw it around a lot. It certainly helps. So the 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 boost here for Hades to try to find something. The only rifle, the only firepower really on the team. And Gambit just running an anti-eco setup early on. So it's, it's different to those kind of gun rounds defaults. Instead, very passive round connector, just making sure that anything is pushed towards the B side of the map. You've got Axile to cover for that. So we get to the one minute mark, they have to start to make a move. So you can start, clear, start to clear space towards the site. Now they've isolated that there's no forward plays. Two players smoking the same position at once. <laughs> Just boosting Hades around the map. Oh, oh, oh. Hello. wonder if they saw his helmet. Do you have some jump peaks? But again, there's not too much that we can expect from Ents at the very least. Very methodical from Gambit. Look at the utility. They are giving them no space to breathe as they get a very easy, uncontested, essentially, bomb plant thanks to their brilliant use of utility. Yeah. Yeah, you have to know your advantages and how to play them effectively. And so, like, for any super top elite level team, you can't be dropping a, dropping the ball when you have rounds like this where you have massive advantages. You've got to understand the best ways to approach those rounds. You can't do the same thing every time, obviously, because then a team can kind of counter strat you on the fly. So you need to offer, you know, a couple looks. And that's oftentimes why you'll also see teams start like Gambit did, where it's super passive. So if there's any rush timings, anything like that, you can just remove that variance completely by playing slow. But at the same time, it also prevents the other team from really knowing how you're going to finish the round because there's no tells in the early or even at the mid round. So good stuff from Gambit on rounds such as that. And that's going to give them the 6-4. Ents are actually sort of struggling so far on this CT side. Yeah, but again, um I think that they've both teams have stopped each other from even getting to like six thousand dollars, let's say. Like now it's round eleven and we see Shiro with the AWP for the first time. Um so certainly that's always going to that kind of war of attrition is always gonna hurt the, the C T team more. Which is proving very difficult for Ensign. If you're light on utility, you may you may feel encouraged to go for those aggressive plays, like when we saw they had I think three M fours and a FAMAS and they went for those um very aggressive plays. Presum presumably feeling really vulnerable um, going through aggressive plays on B through Monster and, and Short B and so on, which um, resulted in heavy losses. So looking at the uh, looking at our, our secondary screens here, they've got some, a reasonable level of utility, so I won't expect that kind of urgency from them. But now we've got Shiro on the AWP. We'll see what the young man is made of. Yeah, they're going heavier towards A as well. Their default's changed here. And that might catch Ents off a little bit, looking to be going a bit faster towards A as well. Not the three players towards Monster. This time also, Ents are pushing Suez as we expect. So Ents will get some control back on the map as they take Suez control. Oh, Hobbit's there. He is able to just get one though. And Dota's falling back, gets sprayed through the wood a little bit. Big opening victory for Gambit, getting that four versus four. And there's very little util left for Ents. Yeah, and still with some presence in short B, and they've got toilets for now, so 
they're in positions where they can get some information and this round can still change. The noise cut by Gambit. Spinks moves to an off angle. You can see Gambit seems to be focused on the A-bomb site. Bomb carrier just waiting outside connector. That is Exile. Forty-seven seconds. And Gambit seemed to be reading the A-bomb site again. They had short B. But he's not having that would make things a lot more difficult for them. Another smoke on long, but Exile's able to creep up and catch Sphinx off guard. And now they're just creeping through the smoke on long as well. So there's going to be a lot of problems here for Ents very, very quickly. Hades will soon go down as well. Just edging forward to hide from toilets, not realizing that they were just standing on the site as well. Completely outmaneuvered Ents. Gambit just creeping and creeping. Like a spider in the bathroom, Dan. Yeah, yeah, they're doing a great job. They're doing a really great job. It just looks so methodical too, and there's enough of you can you can see the dilemma for Ents. They just don't really know. They don't have the information to know. They have to kind of passively just sit there waiting and and have positions that can kind of cover for both options A or B, and that just sucks compared with what we saw from Ents, or rather sorry from Gambit, where they were able to just put all the focus on that A site and slowly creep up. It's super coordinated. They've been so stable so far, I have to say. Gambit, they look very disciplined. Yeah. They can see the body language on it. On Sphinx. Frustrated by the, the pace and execution of Gambit, perhaps. And they find themselves on pistols once again, Ents. We have Shiro over $6,000 now. Same with Nafani. Nafani. I don't know why I keep saying that. <laughs> Connector can be... Don't. Connector can be a very dangerous place versus an eco, especially those CZs. So, curious to see how deep Hobbit will go now. He can wait for his teammates to help clear things as well. If you kind of split the connector position, so to speak, from top and bottom, that can be pretty interesting. Sees a flashbang and he will choose to get out of there. Don't want to give a rifle up, and this is a much better situation for him. Nice angle. Speaking of nice angles. Naphany behind enemy lines. We have two players stuck in connector for the time being, but they can escape through short B, but they'll have to rotate. Dota with the 5-7 on the site, trying to do what he can. A headshot, but not close enough for the one shot. DHL will try to move into position with a Desert Eagle now. As Inters is waiting, and he'll finish Naphany off and reposition to bank. Four versus three for Gambit, as they are still needing to catch up with their teammate, uh, Inters, who's just trying to stay alive and stay careful on the bomb site. Yeah, some stepping there for Inters. Oh, wow. Full expectation, but it's Dihar with this snappy Deagle headshot. And maybe there's more to be had here. Just working from the back of Dice eventually will be surrounded, though. And Snappy has the 5-7. It's not looking good in this engagement, of course. Not too much to be done. Gambit with another plant. And looking to just grab that eighth round convincingly. Yeah, this is death by paper cut for Ents. Some nice 5-7 work from Snappy. So maybe we'll, we will see an increase in the 5-7 over the Desert Eagle yeah. in the uh, Legend stage at the very least. Challenger stage, um, we saw a lot of Deagle attempted. I, f I feel like in the previous map, we saw more successful Deagles from, from Breeze than we maybe saw, generally speaking, in the, in the matches we casted in the last few days. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, it's big half so far from Gambit, and it may just get even bigger because we haven't really had much in the way of signs of life from Ents so far. I think it feels as though they're kind of getting just put like sucked into Gambit's playstyle, and there's they don't really have a way to that we're not really seeing good counterplay against Gambit's pacing. Gambit just kind of playing slow, keeping things methodical, and we don't really see any wrenches thrown into what they're doing by Ents. Well, now maybe is uh, the opportunity. Hades will have the AWP again. He doesn't... He has the worst spawn for A, though. And he is facing B at present, so maybe he'll play, do something towards the lower area. So I don't think we'll see an, an aggressive party play from Hades as we, pr we saw previously. You can see him there. Yeah. 
And it could be a good moment for Gambit to go back to their previous default, where they have three outside monster. They play really slow towards playground, anticipating that Ents are going to change something here. We'll see, though, what Gambit opt to do. Yep, so Hades is going downstairs. And there's a big focus from Gambit towards the B bomb sites as well. Actually, Sphinx will take an aggressive angle around party just to throw some grenades and he will chill. Dota again will be pursuing the short B position. Ooh, Nafani will be uh, punished by D Heart. Down he goes, doesn't see much of anything, and he's dead. So it's a great start for Ents. Again, they've been prioritizing the short B position, and that will certainly help them as all of Ents, sorry, all of Gambit are outside Monster. And Hades says hello. So this is proving to be a very difficult round for Gambit indeed. Yeah, it's really interesting because, you know, they, they don't go for any anyone towards the other side of the map. So they were basically waiting for a moment, a timing, to just rush into the B site in the mid round. Perhaps in response to Ents leaving some uh, position on B in favor of sewers, possibly. It's hard to say, but it's three versus four here for Gambit to recover. Definitely recoverable. And they've cut noise in a in so far as like there's enough time they could have rotated back to the other side of the map oh looking for the timing and it's going to be a full punish from d -Hart. Axel trying to win the battle against the orb there actually is going to be successful somehow yeah that gives him a chance because there are still players upstairs for rents which means uh, they may have equal numbers on the b-bomb site but how can gambit know this the flank is coming in eventually this has got to be a good angle for DR. The crouch pick from Axel, he's just faster. And now we're in a two versus one as he's traded by Sphinx. Shiro now has got 20 seconds to try and get a bomb plant out of this. He'll do some more damage, but he won't be able to do so. Ents make it to five. Yeah, good uh, good opening there from Ents. I mean, they stacked four players on B, so they had the absolute right call for what Gambit was doing, uh, you know, without knowing that. So, so you know, for, fortunately for Ents, there is some serendipity finally, and we'll see... If they can keep that going, you know, they had the, they played the AWP, you know, with the spawn, as you mentioned. And he's having that B spawn, so maybe we'll see him play spawn based once again. And I believe he's going towards the A site right now. Indeed. And you can see that Hades is in, in fact towards bathrooms, the long side of bathrooms here. Again, really passive opening from Gambit. Very slow approach towards party and long. Sphinx is by the boulder once more. Sphinx wants to fight. He's committed to this engagement. Gambit really just not giving the info. Very few sound cues. You can see Hobbit moving around without walking, but apart from that, just shifting very, very early. Really playing a careful game. So they've got to be uncomfortable for Ents, even with a five versus four. Sphinx is starting to flank now, but um, actually, you know, with Hades by the toilets area, that's a lot of information for Ents very quickly indeed. Now see that nobody is here, and this pretty much confirms that everybody is going to be towards the B-bomb site again, which means that Ents can start to visualize. They can be expecting, putting down the smokes to cut the site in half already. Doto trying to avoid as much as he can. Hobbit now with a pop flash, and Axel is going to make his way forward, actually. He could find two from this, almost, but not quite. Diha holds down the map control. Very important frag for him. Hobbit's here to eliminate Snappy. The numbers game will overwhelm on the site, but Hades still has some angles, and Spinks is coming in from the back. Yeah, Hobbit's been tagged down to eight health, so this is so doable here for Spinks. That element of surprise, his teammate goes down, but it's still solid opportunity here if he can just pick, get a free pick, especially on the water player, the healthy player. Here goes Spinks, rounding the corner, the angle's being held. It's a better position for Inter. Spinks still wins it, knows precisely where Hobbit is, goes for the tap, and he's always oh, waiting, and he's so quick. And there's plenty of time for Spinks. Ends pick up one more round, making it to six. Again, great proactive play. Ents figured out the information. The flank from Long, the player at Divider, gives him all the info to get that flank at the right time. Last man standing wins it, and we move to the last round of the first half. Ents keep the score close. Six to the eight of Gambit, which is a pretty good, uh, pretty good side for 
pretty good half a gambit so far. I think eight rounds, not too shabby. They're, these are both strong teams. Yeah, definitely, and, and especially on the T side as well. And it has been very cool to see Gambit's pacing, their, their very quiet approach like you were mentioning. It does make it very uneasy for Ents who it's hard to get information safely. And we see the same opening as we did in the previous round from Gambit. Three players initially towards the A side of the map. Axel looking after any pushes on Monster, which we might have. In fact, Deha gets the pick, you know, looking through Monster with Doto's support. It's early victory, Ooh. but there's a quick trade, and they may just have to run it down after that, surely. <laughs> oh, AD's Ooh. looking to do something crazy, but uh, Gambit are very aware. Now they start to speed up. Snappy just on an island, but Nafani's going to delete him as well, and this may be a very fast last round of the first half. Doto in a one versus four. I like having a, a sniper boosted on those shelves looking towards the party position they had it the other way around there but hobbit was ready for it former champion hobbit little jiggle not sure if you saw much of anything there i think he did because they start to creep on him and it will be nine rounds for gambit at half time so i think from gambit's perspective it's a pretty good half score wise from ensis perspective it could have been a lot worse you can yeah. see some frustrations, but they are up against a very dangerous team. And the pace that Gambit set was, uh, I don't know, it's uncomfortable. But I have to credit Ents for still being proactive and trying to look for that info. Not every round went their way, and they would have loved the score to be the other way around. But again, if, if it was a more passive team, I think they get smashed completely there. Yeah, Gambit looked really stable. Very, very stable. It looks like it was their server, and Ents is, Ents is connected to their server. And Ents is, you know, subject to playing their game. It's really how it felt. I think, as you, you described it, certainly would have felt very uneasy for Ents, I think, the entire time. Again, it, it just seemed very hard for them to get information and very risky because of how slow Gambit was playing, how That's quiet Gambit was playing. But there we go, 9-6. And now we go into the second half. Can Gambit mount a solid defense here? But the smoke on the balcony immediately. Shiro is completely blind. Beautiful chain flashes coming into the B bomb site. Inter's trying to do what he can, as is Hobbit. Fast headshots leaving it a two versus two now. Ents on the site. Gambit shifting, repositioning. No key on the final two players. And Ents are on the hunt, it looks like. They are going after them. And Hobbit's going to engage 1v1. Has a very, very quick look. 20 HP for him. He can't really go up against the Glock spam. He has to really be careful. But Ents are looking to go past him. And this has become very interesting, this pistol round. Spinks is walking back into the angles of Hobbit. Too many angles for him to deal with, which will leave Snappy in a one versus one. He needs to try and isolate these fights now. He'll put himself in a deep position. Got to land that headshot, though. But it'll be Exile to do it. That could have been anyone's, but it's Gambit's. Yeah. Yeah, they uh, pick up the pistol and Ents, they did get the bomb down, so you might actually see a force buy from Ents. I would expect to see it. I think it could make, it could be really good if they've got some good rounds for this. Then it could be really good to see it. Especially in a, in a map like Overpass, you can get a lot done with Util and you can, and so like you could, there's lots of different styles you could approach this with. You could play a very Util heavy style and go for a set piece with mostly pistols onto that B site, or you could try to play the, you're gonna get a couple AKs, play the ranges towards the long positions and out, you know, use the firepower advantage and then pick up the guns if you, if someone dies with the AKs. So there's lots of different approaches you can take. And they go for the two AKs, or actually, sorry, the one AK and the one the Galil. Didn't have enough for another AK, I suppose. Exile, being real careful. Had a few sound cues there. But you don't want to outstay your welcome versus these pistols, especially a Tech 9. Very dangerous affair. And this is where the, the fire rate of your CT weapons can really come in handy. Really want the faster fire rate versus, well, in a round such as this, versus the pistols. Yeah, it's only Hobbit that doesn't have a helmet too. So that's pretty good for Gambit. Early AWP for Shiro. He has support from one player on long. He can fall back to bank though, because he has that uh, security on the long. So I'll give him the space 
the fall away. Blind for now and straight to bank he goes. Rotation will be required now. And Nathani is on the way. They're lining up though. She just Hades on there. And here is the lineup. Nathani looking for a third. Secured quite a lot already. Diha trying to do what he can. AK I'm sure will be collected. And that's a comfortable run for Gambit. At least in terms of how many are alive and so on. Force buy has failed. So we're likely looking at a 12-6 start to this half. Again, that 9-6 scoreline is very, very dangerous if you lose the pistol and you're on the worst end of that scoreline. Because uh, the struggle will most certainly be uphill. Yeah. Quite, quite the incline for Ents, assuming they lose this round. But they've gone for four Desert Eagles and a Tech-9, so let's not get too far ahead of ourselves. Yeah, I think that, that was another good round that just demonstrates how this matchup's been going. You know, Gambit, they kind of knew what was coming. They were really set up very well. They looked really coordinated and disciplined. And I love that style of, of approach that Gambit have, where they're really trying to just eliminate any possible edge their opponent could have in any given situation. It's very disciplined. Shout out to the A4 crew. Ooh, Axel might be in trouble here. He's got players on either side. Hobbit to the rescue. Doto and Hades remain. I think this is a good example of tactical shooter. <laughs> this not this um, game we're seeing right now. Yeah. Yeah, Gambit have come in here very, very prepared. Aim punch, not really going to help Doto there. Well, they get uh, basically nothing done in that round end, which is, you know, sometimes it'd be like that. You are on eco after all. The AK 47s and a full utility will come out. Everybody with Molotovs. They almost have exactly the same buy. Molly, smoke, two flashes, and an AK 47. Hades and Sphinx short of a flash. But apart from that, it's exactly the same. It's a big long mirror. And indeed, they start their first buy versus buy with half the score of Gambit. And if they lose this round, oh, those percentages surely go down quite significantly indeed. Shiro in connector with the AWP. Now he'll need some. Security to help him escape back towards the toilets. No one's picking party. But you still need those flashes, etc. All right, then. An early kill for Ents as they make their way into the B-bomb. Like Hobbit's going to have some work to do. He's still kind of on his own, pulling out the smoke grenade with Hades standing through Monster. That's a mistake. That's a huge error, leaving Nafani on his own. More trouble for Gambit on this B-bomb site. And Nafani's still able to hold things down, though, and still having that presence, a uh, forward presence by the barrels. The flash goes through. Unable to find too much from it. Will back away though. Trying to buy time for his teammates to come into the action here. Shiro will make his way around the corner with that AWP and the boost will be here for Shiro too. So there might be another opportunity there, especially if this player comes up short. Shiro's looking for it. Nothing given just yet. That smoke is providing ample coverage. He's waiting for Ents to put one foot wrong. One mistake. Axile. Not working out on that angle. Oh. Doesn't win the battle. That would have been the, the pick that could really have allowed them to do something. But without the ability to pressure that short position, it looks like Gambit will give up on this one. I've got to say, I really appreciate Nafani's taste in stickers on his M4. Because he's got one hollow at the front and then the rest are non-hollow, which looks so much nicer than all hollow and just hollow spam. Like an RGB keyboard or something, like mm. a Christmas tree. Just got the one hollow. That's, there's a lot of taste. There's a lot. Of, this, this, this is not the view, man. You can't even see the stickers. What are you doing? <laughs> this is the view. So, this is clean. This is this is tasteful, not tasteless. Yeah. It's not spam. I can I can I can respect that. I can appreciate that. Nice, nice. All right. Well. <coughs> Important round for Ents to win. This could be this could this could work out actually for Ents. This could be a good springboard back into the match because you know Gambit's uh, their economy is going to be taking some L's on that one, and you know they have the opportunity to kind of make their mark. You know, start start creating a scenario where Gambit has to play their game because that's been the part of the problem is that Ents have effectively been playing you know Gambit's pace and so on and being very reactive. But that's that is you know sometimes the nature of that CT side. But you know, with that said. All AKs on board. Still good enough money for the Gambit side. This is this is really the round to win if the comeback's to happen, I feel like. Oh, might be difficult to deal with. And it's not really...
pressuring the A side of the map here. They're looking to just go into B. And Suez is being taken. Oh, no! Oh, oh. They're looking for some grenade spram towards the barrels at the very least. Unclear if they were going to commit behind it, but um, that, that did look very awkward to deploy. No one's at the barrels anyway. But um, they don't really have any map control right now, which is kind of awkward. Yeah, they wanted to go for that B play, but now they've lost. It, they took, they got delayed too much, and then ends, uh, Gambit have Suez control now. So that makes it even worse. Yeah, I think we can see Agzal's on long. I, I don't know if he really goes further than this position. I think it would probably be a little crazy. So um, they're not going to get info from there. However, Hobbit has an angle if they go through the tunnel. Only if they go through the tunnel. But this is important. They have two more players on the B bomb site. I don't know if some town cues have been heard there. You can see Shiro is on the move as well. Oh no, Hobbit's moving through connector. They're rotating towards the A bomb site. They have no idea what's going on. They're out of position now, and Shiro's gonna have so much to do from this short spot. Hobbit needs to help him out here because he's wondering about his six as well. He's got grenades coming in his direction and Gambit, unsure as to what is happening, abandoned B and have given Entz the keys to the castle. There's still some util here for the retake, but it's a forward play coming through from Entz. This is a heads up move, but oh wow, Inter is able to take down both of those aggressing Entz players. Even just with two here, just now with Hades. Nice headshot onto Inter, but so many more players left to go, and it's not going to work out wow. whatsoever for Hades. Gambit played it very patiently, and it works beautifully. Some small margins there, which didn't work out the way events, the pop flash play. You know, it's a bit scary because if you run directly, you might run into some, some fire there, but a bit slow with the deep angle, which allowed the first kill and the follow-up for the second one was huge for Gambit. Ents ending up in a one versus four after planting the bomb when Gambit made the wrong rotation there is uh, not what I was expecting to see, but fantastic for Gambit. And now the pressure really rises. That 13th round is not what Ents wanted to see there. They were supposed to be on the catch up. There are two variations of um, that smoke on Monster as well. One of them leaves a slight gap where you can try to play some shenanigans if someone gets too, gets too close to it. The other one smokes it off properly. Six round lead now for Gambit. Entz will have some shortcomings. d with a Desert Eagle only. They have an AWP for Hades, however. And it's looking to clear space around the A side of the map. There is Axel, who's on long. He can spot for anything towards long. However, he does very limited vision towards front bathrooms at the moment. You've got Naf and he's just playing the jump spot game around dice, so very passive indeed. And this is because we have the sewers control. But with Sphinx's pick onto Hobbit there, that may destabilize the information game for Gambit, and they may have to start gambling in this position. Yeah, they're on the receiving end of this denial of information now. Gunafini lining up a jump throw, pop flash for Exile, who starts to get into position. Dihar's going to eat all of that. Slight info though, you've got a man of a deagle who could be lurking. Does that mean it's likely to be B? I'm not sure if Nafini saw much of him there, but Shiro's about to see something. More grenades flying into the site now. They will obscure his vision, in fact, but Nafini's repositioned to try and stop a bomb flight. There are some flashbangs which will slow things down, and Axar's position on long is going to be a huge problem for Ents. How do they plant the bomb here? They've got no lurker to deal with him whatsoever, and Nafini's got some cover as well. There's a gap in the smoke, no less. The long player taken down at the very least, but Nafini is still here. They know that. Got to be careful about his position. Sphinx is waiting oh. for him, but that headshot from Nafini is outrageous. Doto's got no cover, and he's about to get sandwiched. Shiro on the other side as well. Two versus three, even if they get these two kills, it won't matter from Ents' POV, but Gambit will get both. So awkward for them on the A bomb site. Gambit now two rounds away from victory. Yeah, sick defense there from Gambit. My God. Nafani in particular, just doing everything perfectly just to be a total nuisance. That flake actually on the play kind of, when he was kind on of behind ABC, Optimus. Yes, that was beautiful. That's not a frag you expect to see him get, but it just wins the round for them. See the, uh, the outside monster smoke, the monster tunnel smoke, deep one. There it is. And we get the rush straight through it. Dihar running through the flames. They are getting burned alive. Oh my days. Look at the kill feed there. Snappy and Hades with a minute 35 in a one versus five made, two versus five made four. But with Snappy gone now, Hades has got so much to do. This was a force buy, no less. Trying to keep Gambit off match point, but uh, they've struggled to do that, Ents. 
very tough draw for them here on the Legend stage. What can he really do now? Does he just try and hold on to this? Is, is there any point even pursuing, really, when you've got one more round to play and you've got a rifle? It's so interesting because Ents is such a good team and the Gambit, they, they play so tight that it's just very... I keep finding myself using the word disciplined because they're, they're very much focused on making sure that they play every edge correctly. And there's such a focus and attention to that level of detail. You can really see why Gambit is so good in this kind of sample that we're seeing on Overpass. Unless he really wanted the AK there. I think he had to save. He would have had more grenades. He had two two grenades on him and five hundred dollars. So he, he maybe gets four nades there, but uh, such is life. Maybe he wasn't allowed to save. Gambit with quite a few match points now here on Overpass. A, a vintage angle from Shiro. Connection, but no kill. He'll get a five versus four regardless. This position looks so awkward for Exile. But he seems comfortable here. Yep. Five versus three. And oh, God, it's getting worse. That's the bomb down as well on party. And that will certainly be communicated to the rest of the squad. They don't need to do much with that information, though. It's just It just really lets them know how the movement for the opponents needs to be. And, of course, Dihar is very weak, getting tagged earlier, crossing Fountain. And it, it, it seems it just seems so pedestrian right now as far as Gambit's concerned. They are looking so clean. And it seems like Enz can't find any way in. Snappy clearing the bathrooms here. Has Dihar in tow, but Shiro is ready to finish off the job with the AWP. The jump across, great connection, and Dihar goes 